Area 51 folklore never seems to rest. The place was initially called Paradise Ranch, which was named to attract workers to help test the U-2 spy plane. Area 51 stuck later as it sounded cooler. However, the strange name Area 51 has its roots in a method used to survey land and express them on maps during the olden days. A broad region is split into a grid and each cell has a name. The cell that caged the region where the military facility is presently located was Area 51. It is located in the high desert of southern Nevada, 75 miles north of Las Vegas. Over the past 60 years, its facilities have been built around Groom Lake, a flat, dry lake bed. Inside, the biggest government-controlled land parcel encompassing 4,687 square miles, this area is just a little smaller than the state of Connecticut, three times the size of Rhode Island, and more than twice as big as Delaware. The top secret facility, Area 51, or Groom Lake to give it its actual name, is where cutting-edge avionics and armament systems are tested. A nuclear test site called Area 13 is also there. On a President Harry Truman's instructions, 105 nuclear bombs were detonated above ground at the site starting in 1951, while another 828 were detonated underground in tunnel chambers and high vertical shafts. A nuclear bomb was tested for the final time on American soil on September 23, 1992 at the Nevada test site. The facility houses the largest weapons-grade plutonium and uranium in the United States, not barred inside a nuclear laboratory. Approximately five miles northeast of the northernmost corner sits Area 51, just outside the Nevada test site. Conspiracy theories covering the base suggest that it is used to test alien technology salvaged from supposed crash sites. Being a secret for many years and still inaccessible to the general public, this innocuous-looking military installation has evolved into an intrinsic part of the modern mythology and urban legends of the 20th century, significantly influencing media and pop culture. Everything that goes on at Area 51, and most of what goes on at the Nevada Test and Training Range, is classified when it is happening. So it is all about secrets. The Central Intelligence Agency has declassified two early projects at Groom Lake, the U-2 spy plane declassified in 1998, and the A-12 Oxcart spy plane declassified in 2007. Only in 2013, a formerly classified CIA document chronicled the history of the U-2 spy plane. A heavily redacted version had previously been released in 1998. According to the report, in 1955, the remote site, which included an airfield not used by the military since World War II, had been selected to test the U-2. Test flights of the spy plane and subsequent aircraft accounted for many of the UFO sightings in the area. The U-2 could reach altitudes much higher than any other planes at the time. After the U-2 was put into service in 1956, Area 51 was used to develop other aircraft, including the A-12, also known as Oxcart, Renaissance Plane, and the stealth fighter F-117 Nighthawk. The name Area 51 is permanently redacted or blacked out in thousands of pages of declassified memos and reports. There are only two known exceptions, most likely mistakes. Government projects and operations have been kept unknown for decades, some for good reasons, others for arguably terrible ones, and one that should never have occurred. All of these activities involved cutting-edge research and were carried out for national security. The Atomic Energy Commission's many facilities across the nation are now called the Department of Energy. The single largest facility is, and always has been, the Nevada Test Site. Other parts of the Nevada Test and Training Range would be in charge of the Department of Defense. But there were gray areas, like Area 51, Ragged Mountain Ranges, and flat, dry lake beds just outside the official borders of the Nevada test site and not under the Department of Defense. These areas are where the most secret projects were set up. No one needed to know about them. The whole thing was declassified in 2013, even though the US government has never admitted it exists. Area 51 has forged more conspiracy theories than any other military facility. The employees reach the facility by way of airplanes. They fly in and out of a restricted terminal at McCarran International Airport on one of several unmarked planes authorized to pass through the airspace above. To enter the base, you don't get a license. What is required is two things. First is a need to enter the facility, 
and by need, I don't mean curiosity, but an actual purpose for being there. Secondly, you must have the appropriate level of security clearance. Those two conditions must be met. Satellite imagery of the installation was censored until 2018, which added to the secrecy. The specification of Area 51's purpose made its connection to alien lore become clear. Unidentified flying objects in or near Area 51 have been reported multiple times. And the popular image of the place is a secret site for extraterrestrial research. How did that come about? Besides the sightings of strange craft, Area 51 mythology was fulfilled in 1989 when a man named Robert Lazar claimed to have worked on extraterrestrial technology inside the base. Lazar told Las Vegas television reporter George Knapp that he saw autopsy photographs of aliens inside the facility and that the U.S. government used the facility to study rescued alien spacecraft. Although Lazar was discredited, his suits spun numerous government conspiracy theories, including extraterrestrial life. As per the CIA, test flights of the U-2 and subsequent military aircraft account for many UFO sightings in the area. There is no evidence of extraterrestrial contact at Area 51 or anywhere else. Aside from the raged interviews and the host of documentaries made about Lazar and the Area 51 UFO connection, the base has become a favored location in more overtly fictional movies and TV shows. On June 20th, 2019, one of the most popular podcasts, The Joe Rogan Experience, the libertarian-flavored podcast, published a two-hour-long interview with Bob Lazar and filmmaker Jeremy Corbell. Throughout the interview, Lazar mostly recites and overstates his original story about aliens at Area 51, as told to KLAS in 1989. One of the Joe Rogan fans who heard Lazar's interview was a 21-year-old college student from California, Maddie Roberts. Because he heard Rogan's interview with Lazar, he had Area 51 on the brain when he came up with the idea to create a joke Facebook event to storm Area 51 on September 20th, Roberts told Vox in an interview. In 2019, what began as a joke on social media got wildly out of hand when 3.5 million people voiced interest in attending an event by 21-year-old Maddie Roberts. The name of the tongue-in-cheek Facebook event was Storm Area 51, They Can't Stop All of Us. As the name urges, the assumed plan was to charge at the base in large enough numbers to overwhelm security. The goal was to unveil putative secrets like alien technology and secretive research. In the end, an estimated 6,000 people pushed it through to the low-key summer event and partook in some activities like hatchet-throwing and drinking limited-edition alien-themed Bud Light beer. Area 51's light security was not challenged. While Lazar set the ball rolling years ago, no matter how fallacious the rumors of alien tech and Area 51 are, the connection has been cemented into public consciousness and pop culture. The military facility has a good reason to be secretive and off-limits to the public, and it might have nothing to do with little green men. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, let us know what would you like the next video to be about. I'll be reading you in the comments. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for future updates. See you soon.